In the previous video, we looked at the Sharp Purser test, and I mentioned that that was one of the two major special tests that are used to assess the integrity of the transverse cervical ligament, which is sometimes just called the transverse ligament. This is a ligament that normally connects the atlas, so C1, to the axis C2, and it prevents excessive anterior translation of the atlas on the axis. Now, if by any mechanism there is damage to the transverse cervical ligament, the tendency is to have excessive anterior translation of C1 relative to C2. And if you have that excessive anterior translation, that's going to narrow the vertebral foramen, and specifically at the atlantoaxial junction between C1 and C2. Now, what structure traverses the vertebral foramen, really the entire vertebral canal? It's the spinal cord. And so if you narrow the hole that the spinal cord travels through, then you potentially compress the spinal cord, and that can lead to serious injury and even death, especially because we're talking about compression of the spinal cord at a level that's very high up between C1 and C2. And this is the most common complication in individuals with rheumatoid arthritis and other conditions like Marfan syndrome where you have weakening of the transverse cervical ligament. And the integrity of this ligament can be assessed via the transverse ligament stress test, sometimes just called the transverse ligament test. Now, as opposed to the sharp purser test, which is an easing test, the transverse ligament stress test is a provocative test. To perform this test, the patient's going to be positioned in supine, and the PT is going to hold the patient's head with their palms and digits 3, 4, and 5. And then they're going to place their index fingers between the occiput and the spinous process of C2, like you see right there. So that space is going to be where the posterior tubercle of C1 would be. Remember, C1 does not have a spinous process. It has a posterior tubercle, which is the equivalent, but you can't palpate it because it's a small structure and it's very deep. So to get about where it would be, you find the spinous process of C2, which you can palpate, and then you just go superior to that. And you should feel a space where you don't feel any bone, it's just kind of fleshy in that area. That is where you want to put your index fingers. And then from here, the PT is going to lift the patient's head by translating it anteriorly. So again, you're lifting the skull, and by virtue of the occiput's attachment on C1, you're also lifting C1 anteriorly. So translating upwards. Now what you can see here is I'm not allowing any net flexion of the head. I'm not allowing any net extension of the head. But another good way to know that you're doing this correctly has to do with your index finger placement. So I've got my index fingers in that space above the C2 spinous process where C1 is. And as I translate C1 anteriorly, in other words, bring the head upwards, ever so slightly you should feel the C2 spinous process kind of move a little bit closer, kind of push into your index fingers just a little bit. If you feel C2 kind of poking into your fingers a little bit, you know you're in the right place. And you're gonna hold this test position for 10 to 20 seconds. And what you're looking for is reproduction of any of these symptoms over here. So a positive test would be constituted by abnormal pupil response, eye twitching or nystagmus, a soft end feel. Remember, we're looking at the integrity of the transverse cervical ligament. If it's a ligament, it should have a firm end feel. So if it has a soft end feel, that's abnormal, that would be a positive test. Muscle spasms in the area, dizziness, nausea, paresthesias of the lip, face, or the limbs, or a lump sensation in the throat. Any one of those things would constitute a positive test and suggest that the patient has damage to the transverse cervical ligament. Now, as a standalone test, the sensitivity is not very good, only 65%, but the specificity is excellent, 99%. So if you perform this test and the patient presents with any of these things, it doesn't have to be all of them, it can just be one of them, there's a 99% chance that they have damage to the transverse cervical ligament. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.